Now the next chromatography that we'll be discussing is high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC. Chromatographic techniques are slow and time consuming. The separation can be greatly improved by applying high pressure in the range of 5000 to 10000 pounds per square inch. Hence this technique is also referred to as high pressure liquid chromatography. HPLC is an analytical technique to separate, identify and quantify components in a mixture. It can be applied to ion exchange, size exclusion or affinity chromatography. HPLC requires the use of non-compressible resin material and strong metal columns. Due to rapidity in action, it is used for assaying amino acids, peptides, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, vitamins, hormones, metabolites and drugs. So basically, the column chromatographies that we have studied till now, if we apply a pressure system to these chromatographies, it will get converted into high performance or high pressure liquid chromatography. Now let us see the principle of HPLC. HPLC is a form of column chromatography that pumps a sample mixture in a solvent at high pressures through a column with chromatographic packing material. All chromatographic separations including HPLC operate under the same basic principle separation of a sample into its constituent parts because of the difference in the relative affinities of different molecules for the mobile phase and the stationary phase used in separation. HPLC has the ability to separate and identify compounds that are present in any sample that can be dissolved in a liquid in trace concentrations as low as parts per trillion. As the sample passes through the column, it interacts between two phases at different rate, primarily due to different polarities of the analyte. Analytes that have the least amount of interaction with the stationary phase or the most amount of interaction with the mobile phase will exit the column faster. So to sum up, HPLC is based on the same principle as we have studied earlier for the column chromatographies. Here, mainly a pump is introduced that pumps a sample mixture in a solvent at a high pressure into the column. Types of HPLC First is normal phase HPLC, where the column is filled with tiny polar silica particles and a non-polar solvent, for example, hexane. A typical column has an internal diameter of 4.6 mm or smaller and a length of 150 to 250 mm. Non-polar compounds in the mixture will pass more quickly through the column as polar compounds will stick longer to the polar silica than non-polar compounds will. Second type is reversed phase HPLC where the column size is same as that of normal phase HPLC but the column is now filled with silica particles which are modified to make them non-polar. This is done by attaching long hydrocarbon chains of usually 8 to 18 carbon atoms to its surface. A polar solvent is used for example a mixture of water and an alcohol such as methanol. Polar compounds in the mixture will pass more quickly through the column because a strong attraction occurs between the polar solvent and the polar molecules in the mixture. So the molecules which readily dissolves into the mobile phase will come out of the column at a much faster speed. Another type is ion exchange where the column packing contains ionic groups and the mobile phases buffer. It is used to separate anions and cations that we have studied earlier in very much detail. Size exclusion HPLC can also be used where the molecules diffuse into pores of a porous medium and are separated according to their relative size to the pore size. Large molecules elute first and smaller molecules elute later. High performance affinity chromatography where an immobilized biologically related binding agent or affinity ligand is used as the stationary phase to which the desired molecule binds and gets separated from the sample mixture. Now let us see the instrumentation for HPLC. First is the solvent reservoir where a reservoir holds the solvent or eluent. Degasser. All eluents are degassed that is the air bubbles are removed from the eluent using a degasser before use. Pump. A high pressure pump aspirates the mobile phase from the solvent reservoir and forces it through the system's column and injector. So the main purpose of pump is to send the solvent or mobile phase or the eluent at a high pressure into the column. 
then sample injector an injector is able to introduce the sample into the continuously flowing mobile phase stream that carries the sample into the hplc column here the main point to keep in mind is that the injector is not putting the sample directly into the column but it is injecting the sample into the solvent stream that has been created by the pump by high pressure Next is the column. The column contains the chromatographic packing material needed to effect the separation. Detector is needed to see the separated compound bands as they elute from the HPLC column. Data collective devices. The computer integrates the response of the detector to each component and places it into a chromatograph that is easy to read and interpret. The diagram shows the entire setup of the instrumentation of HPLC. Now let us see the working of HPLC. A reservoir holds the solvent that is mobile phase. It is degassed before entering the column. A high pressure pump that is solvent delivery system or solvent manager is used to generate a specified flow rate of mobile phase. Then an injector is able to introduce or inject the sample into the continuously flowing mobile phase stream that carries the sample into the HPLC column. The column contains the chromatographic packing material that is stationary phase which is needed to effect the separation. A detector is needed to see the separated compound bands as they elute from the HPLC column and the mobile phase exits the detector and can be sent to waste or collected as desired. Now let us see different steps of HPLC in detail. First is column selection, then column packing, sample injection, mobile phase and degassing, pumps, detectors and data collection devices. Now coming to the columns. Two different types of columns are majorly used for HPLC. First is the conventional columns. These are generally made of stainless steel and are manufactured so that they can withstand pressures up to 50 megapascals. The columns are generally 3 to 25 cm long and approximately 4.6 mm internal diameter to give typical flow rates of 13 cm cube per minute. Second type of column is microbore or open tubular columns. They have an internal diameter of 1 to 2 mm and are generally 25 to 50 cm long. They can sustain flow rates of 5 to 20 cm cube per minute. Microbore columns have three important advantages over conventional columns. Reduced eluent consumption due to the slower flow rates. Ideal for interacting with a mass spectrometer due to the reduced flow rate and increased sensitivity to the higher concentration of analytes. The next step is the column packing. Two main forms of matrix or stationary phase materials are available based on a rigid solid structure. Both forms involve approximately spherical particles of a uniform size to minimize space for diffusion and hence band broadening to occur. They are made of chemically modified silica or styrene or divinyl benzene copolymers. The two forms are microporous supports in which micropores branch through the particles that are generally 5 to 10 mm in diameter and bonded phase in which the porous silica particles in the column usually have chemically bonded phase of hydrophobic alkyl chains on the surface that interact with the components through chemical bonding to separate them from one another. Now after the column is packed, next step is sample injection. The application of the sample onto an HPLC column is the correct way in a particularly important factor in achieving successful separations. The most common method of sample introduction is by use of a loop injector. As you can see in the diagram that in load position the sample is within the sample injector and in inject position the sample is transferred via pump into the column. Next is the mobile phase and degassing. The choice of mobile phase to be used in any separation depends on the type of separation to be achieved. Isocratic elution may be made with a single pump using a single eluent or two or more eluents pre-mixed in fixed proportions. Gradient elution generally uses separate pumps to deliver two eluents in proportions determined by a gradient programmer. All eluents for use in HPLC systems must be specially purified because traces of impurities can affect the column and interfere with the detection system. Pure eluents for use in HPLC systems are available commercially, but even with these, a 15 mm microfilter is generally introduced into the system prior to the pump. 
It is also essential that all eluents be degassed before use. Otherwise, gassing, that is the presence of air bubbles in the eluent, tends to occur in most pumps. Gassing, which tends to be particularly bad for eluents containing aqueous methanol and ethanol, can alter column resolution and interfere with the continuous monitoring of the eluent. Eluate is the mobile phase containing the separated analyte molecules. Degassing of the eluent may be carried out in several ways by warming, by stirring vigorously with a magnetic stirrer, by applying a vacuum, by ultrasonication and by bubbling helium gas through the eluent reservoir. Next are the pumps. Pumping system for delivery of the eluent are one of the most important features of HPLC systems. Constant displacement pump maintains a constant flow rate through the column irrespective of changing conditions within the column. The reciprocating pump is the most commonly used form of constant displacement pump. Such pumps produce small pulses of flow and pulse dampeners are usually incorporated into the system to minimize the pulsing effect. Next are the detectors. Since the quantity of material applied to an HPLC column is normally very small, it is imperative that the sensitivity of the detector system is sufficiently high and stable to respond to the low concentrations of each analyte in the eluate. The most commonly used detectors are variable wavelength detectors. These are based upon UV visible spectrophotometry. Scanning wavelength detectors, these have the facility to record the complete absorption spectrum of each analyte, thus aiding identification. Fluorescence detectors, these are extremely valuable for HPLC because of their greater sensitivity than UV detectors. However, the technique is limited by the fact that relatively few analytes fluoresce. Electrochemical detectors, these are selective for electroactive analytes that are potentially highly sensitive. Mass spectrophotometer detectors, these enable the analyte to be detected and its structure determined simultaneously. NMR spectrometer detectors, these give structural information about the analyte that is complementary to that obtained via HPLC MS. Refractive index detectors, these rely on a change in the refractive index of the eluate as analytes emerge from out of the column. Evaporative light scattering detectors or ELSD. These rely on the vaporization of the eluate, evaporation of the eluent and the quantification of the analyte by light scattering. Now let us see the applications of HPLC. The HPLC has developed into a universally applicable method so that it finds its use in almost all areas of chemistry, biochemistry and pharmacy. It is used in the analysis of drugs, synthetic polymers, pollutants in environmental analytics, in determination of drugs in biological matrices, isolation of valuable products, product purity and quality control of industrial products and fine chemicals, separation and purification of biopolymers such as enzymes or nucleic acids, in water purification, in pre-concentration of trace components, in ligand exchange chromatography, in ion exchange chromatography of proteins, and high pH and ion exchange chromatography of carbohydrates and oligosaccharides. Now let us see the advantages and limitations of HPLC. Advantages include that it controls and automates chromatography instrumentation. It provides data management, security features and reporting and instrument validation. It is a very powerful and adaptable technique. It increases productivity by managing all the areas of analysis from sample to instrument and from separation to reporting results. It is fast, it has high efficiency and accuracy, it is versatile and extremely precise when it comes to identifying and quantifying chemical components. Limitations include the cost. Despite its advantages, HPLC can be costly, requiring large quantities of expensive organics, complexity. HPLC does have low sensitivity for certain compounds and some cannot be detected as they are irreversibly absorbed. Volatile substances are better separated by gas chromatography than HPLC.